Do you know why you're here? Yeah, because I broke chain of command. Decades ago, we used to watch movies and films simply for their artsy characters, well-developed narratives, and creative camera shots and angles. Films over the years have changed so drastically, and a big reason for that is thanks to the help of CGI, aka computer-generated imagery. CGI and special effects have changed the way we look at films. In fact, some of the most successful films of the last decade have been superhero films from the MCU and DC, which have all sorts of creative effects and live-action sequences in them thanks to CGI. One of these such movies where the use of CGI is very prevalent is in Outside the Wire, which is a live action film starring MCU actor Anthony Mackie, but the actual film looks way different from what the directors and actors shot on set. But before we take a closer look at the CGI used, do make sure to leave a big thumbs up on the video and subscribe to our channel if you're looking for more awesome news in the world of entertainment. Now, let's take a look at Outside the Wire and what it really looks like without the use of CGI. Directed by Mikhail Hafstrom, Outside the Wire was released in 2021 as a science fiction and action film. The film was set in 2036 during an ongoing civil war between pro-Russian insurgents and local resistance in Ukraine that led the US to deploy their peacekeeping forces. Now, here's where the CGI element comes in. During the operation, the US Marines team worked with a bunch of robotic soldiers who have been given the acronym GUNK. Anthony Mackie plays the role of Captain Leo, who is a highly advanced and experimental android super soldier who is masquerading as a human officer. In an interview with Netflix Film Club where they took us behind the scenes of production of the film, Anthony Mackie described his character as someone who had been developed designed, and trained on by the military. Mackie goes on to say that his character is very skilled with weapons and technology. The film, which would have required a strong acting cast and director, also needed a more than qualified visual effects team to do a lot of the work for them behind the scenes. Sebastian Barker was the visual effects supervisor for Outside the Wire and had this to say about the protagonist, Leo. Leo was a real process of exploration. Humanoid robots have been done so many times before that it's very difficult to come up with something that feels original. Right from the get-go, when our main character Leo meets the other top-ranked character Harper, we get the first sense of CGI in the humanoid Robert that is Leo. That one first scene where Anthony Mackie's character is shirtless in the locker room showcased the brilliant CGI and detail that went into the visual effects. Sebastian Barker broke down the use of CGI and visual effects in that scene, saying the following, We really needed that scene to stick with the audience all the way through the whole film. Otherwise, the whole basis of the the entire movie falls apart. We ended up that we had a body that supported itself and this exoskeleton and creating the illusion of him having a human body under his t-shirt. The whole shot was done with a green screen. Anthony Mackie originally filmed the part shirtless and the behind the scenes footage showed that the visual effects team made a replica of an android body on top of the actor's real body to give it a realistic look. Barker talked about this exact point and went on to say that technically there would be these electrical currents that could go into this structure that could contract and expand it so that it can uh, foam muscle contraction and so on, so that he really feels believable. But then underneath is where his power really comes from. The visual effects supervisor went on to describe their plans of working with the negative space surrounding the exoskeleton since the arms were to be made really thin as compared to Mackie's real exterior. This was done to replica the look of an actual piece of metal such as a crowbar. The reason for this was because the metal, although small in size, actually weighed a ton and could be carried without a problem. This goes to show how well the visual team planned it out. Trying to replicate the humanoid robot to an actual piece of metal that functions the same way and basically looks like what it would happen if an actual piece of metal came to life, which is fascinating to say the least. To make this entire idea come to life, the visual effects and coordinators team had to work on amplifying their reflections in certain parts of the body. Sometimes the team would even bring the shading of Anthony Mackie's skin back on top as well to try and help ground it, make it seem as realistic as it possibly could. Saying that this process was really tricky, Barker went on to declare that it was all necessary in getting the character to look like what it eventually did in the film. One big reason for the need of the CGI was facilitated in the plot and story. The military in the film had been advanced and were not exactly the normal troops you'd come to see in the Saving Private Ryan or any other classic from the past. Anthony Mackie talked in detail about this, saying that the advancement 
in the military in this movie shows that the military has gone to a more robotic warfare. So they've deployed these robots that have been called Gumps. And the Gumps are in the first line of defense. Given that the Gumps are such a crucial part of the story, the visual effects and the CGI for these man-made robots had to be precise as well. The main problem according to the visual effects team was creating a world that felt a little more advanced than what we're currently experiencing in this day and age, but could not also feel like 100% sci-fi and gimmicky. So the right balance needed to be created to make it sound like there were some robotic elements, whereas making sure it did not seem full-on Terminator either. The kind of work that needed to be put in was real. More than just the actual designs of the Gumps, the team needed to show the audience how the military used the big guns, such as how exactly did the Gumps move or even how they attacked. So for designing the Gumps, visual effects supervisor Sebastian Barker had more to say. The U.S. Gumps obviously were very advanced and cutting-edge technology. The insurgent Gumps also cutting-edge, but from a Russian design line. The team went on to say that while designing the Gumps for the first time, it became quite clear that both the U.S. Gump and the insurgent Gump were to be created in a similar style. But to make sure that the two did not feel too similar, to make this change, the team worked hard on the bank heist scene in particular. Sebastian said, when you've got really fast cuts between the Gumps, you have to understand what the geography of the moment is. This is why animation language and distinguishing between the two was so important. Otherwise, it would seem like both were in the same team. The team built these very blocky versions of them in the first design. The visual effects team built rudimentary versions of them to do animation tests and get a good feel of how they move before locking the designs. What's so fascinating is that the team actually looked at the movement of the special forces to base the U.S. Gumps off of, and this was added to the choreography that was done by the stunt team. Mackie described this by saying, it feels like you're standing with a green ball and you have to take the ball and act like it's something else. This is what happened with the movie as well. The actors were covered from head to toe in green screen figurines and were dotted so that the CGI process could be done on them. Then the team changed the people into the gumps behind the scenes and even put a 50 caliber machine gun on their backs to make them look even cooler. Basically, all of these scenes are required to go through a process of initial development and then were later worked on visually after the actual shooting was done. This allowed them to be based off the actions of the actors, while the visual effects team carried the majority of the scenes with their brilliant prowess and use of CGI, making a mere man walking looking like a CGI figurine who shoots a machine gun when he bends down. Really cool stuff and amazing the way the team implemented it. With this, we've come to the end of our video. Now it's your turn to tell us what you think. Did you like the CGI that Outside the Wire used in their behind the scenes production? Let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel for more awesome content in the world of entertainment. That's all for us. We'll catch you in the next video.